Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, currency strategist with DailyFX. Today is Wednesday, November 9th, 2016, and these are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. Donald Trump is the next president of the United States. What we're seeing today is a little bit of a wild market reaction because focus has gone from the short term, what does a Trump presidency mean for the U.S. economy and its neighbors and perhaps the potential Fed rate hike in December to, well, time to examine his campaign promises a little bit more closely and perhaps see how this could impact the global economy and the U.S. economy over the longer period. So the initial reaction, short term, dollar. Obviously, as we laid out beforehand, the reason why we were bearish on the dollar in the event of a Trump victory was due to the pause it would give to the Federal Reserve in the event of him winning. Now, this is basically due to the departure uh, of fiscal policy that Trump would undertake relative to Obama. For better or for worse, Obama is a great different animal than Trump is. Clinton, however, was cut from the same cloth. So if Clinton were to have won, the Fed could say, in all intents and purposes, things will stay the same. We can proceed with the path that we've laid out at hand. Now, because of the difference in potential policy coming down the line, markets were forced to revisit that notion. The Fed rate odds dip from around 80% before the results were announced to below 50% yesterday. Yet we're seeing the dollar and stocks and risk come back in. And as we talked about on Monday, when the market had cast its vote after the weekend developments, we said that in the event of a Trump win, which would trigger a sell-off in equities, we would very much be of the mindset that it might be worth buying the dip. Now, why would that be the case? It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but why might it be worth buying the dip? Well, from a fiscal standpoint, Trump will be uh, extremely stimulative. On the infrastructure standpoint, uh, on tax cuts, on issues that could help boost consumer spending and actually help the long-term appeal of the economy. That in and of itself is inflationary, which is why I think throughout the morning today we've seen that U.S. Treasury yields have risen back so quickly. Likewise, that wave of fiscal stimulus that's expected to come alongside the reduced tax burden may actually be positive for business sentiment long-term. And so equities are coming back in right now. What I do think, though, is that there are some significant problems with this view for the long term for the global economy. This very well may mean the end of the post-war liberal world order led by the United States since 1945. I imagine that the great deal of uncertainty itself will prove to be a chill factor for a lot of these emerging market economies. Whether or not Trump actually builds the wall with Mexico is kind of secondary now. Just the fact that this is something that could happen, that could threaten the Mexican economy, will likely reduce inflows to it for a number of years to come. So here's how I think things will play out. Developed market economies and their currencies, like the euro, like the yen, could stand to do well versus the dollar over the medium term, right? given the fact that the Fed probably won't raise rates next month. I don't think that the Fed will write off a rate hike, however, completely, because, again, of the inflationary tendencies of some of the policies, the fiscal policies, the tax cuts, and the fiscal uh, uh, stimulus that Trump has proposed. That's why, again, the long end of the curve is moving up today. And so I don't think it's going to be, again, a straight shot. What we did see was euro dollar run back up above 113, but here we are now back at 110.98. Same reaction in dollar yen, which of course has been aided by the rebound in equities. This morning we were trading as low as 101.19. Here we are at 103.10. The commodity currencies, the emerging market currencies, probably should do a little bit worse. Dollar max may be in a little bit tough throw of things. Aussie dollar, despite the fact that we've seen some positive indicators like iron ore and coking coal prices go up over the last few days, which is typically a sign that demand from China is increasing. Coking coal is used in the steel production process. Aussie dollars break out to the top side here, may be under, again, a little bit of a chill now that we've seen emerging markets and generally speaking risk 
take a little bit of a hit. So what I think you should do as a trader is A, use less leverage over the next several days. Try to just observe what's going on in the market and don't read into the rhetoric you're seeing too much in the news. In fact, given what you saw in the news leading up to this vote and the past Brexit vote, there might be an understanding, a bit of skepticism why you may not totally respect or agree with some of the commentary coming out from there. Now, if you look at our Brexit preview, we actually had in our last update, leave was the favorite to go in our update yesterday for the U.S. elections. We had outlined cases for both Trump and Clinton presidency because we were concerned that both options were on the table. And indeed, this is why you have contingency plans. This is why you look for... I apologize about that. Mike just dropped the... This is why you plan for more than one outcome. You have a base case scenario, and then if that doesn't work out, what's your plan B? What's your plan C? And so we're seeing the market today react as we would expect it to in the event of a Trump victory in the very short term. Now we need to start looking long term because that's where people could get some ease from, be more uh, soothed by the prospects of what the potential fiscal policies will be like in the future that could, again, affect the U.S. economy. Just, again, roundup, dollar off now probably will still to do well against the commodity currencies, emerging market currencies over the medium term. On the other side, U.S. dollar, probably poised to fall against the euro and the yen, despite the reactions that we're seeing today. There is a long way to go. Obviously, we're still within the first few hours of this reaction. Dollar index has come back in quite considerably. Fed rate hike odds are down, but we may start to reconsider what the fiscal policy implications are. And if we do see that wave of tax cuts and fiscal stimulus that's been promised by Trump throughout his campaign, then those are both inflationary measures that could force the Fed to raise rates sooner than what people were expecting, even the event of a pause in December. That's it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out to me through the Daily Effects Real-Time Newsfeed stock tweets or Twitter at CVECUFX. You can always email me, CVECU at dailyeffects.com. If, if you're in the United States today, I'll be on NPR's Marketplace this morning at 8 Eastern, talking about the election and how it's impacted FX markets. If you want to talk about trade specifically, we'll be hosting a special presidential results webinar 10 Eastern, 1500 GMT in the Daily FX Live trading room. You can head over to dailyfx.com. Uh, the calendar's there and sign up. Again, good luck trading the rest of today, and of course, hopefully speak to you soon.